update. So um, we're going to go on and jump into what's going on. So just kind of a schedule of events for today. We're going to have introductions to inclusive post-secondary ed. So what is inclusive post-secondary ed? We are then going to follow it with introductions of Georgia's programs, and then we're going to have question and answer time. I'm going to turn it over to Darian Todd, who is one of, um, I'll, I'll turn over in just a second. Um, we do have ASL interpreting um, uh, available on today's call. We have just gotten notice that our closed captioner has lost power. So we, um, at this point, are um, not going to be able to have closed captioning, but during the when we post this because we're recording it we will have it closed captioned at that point my apologies um but we have lost the ability to have a closed captioner because of our weather situation um but we do have two a cell interpreters and if you need them you can find them by searching in the participant um list and it, their um, names start with asl and you can pen them as they are needed now I'm going to turn it over to Darian Todd, who is an intern at the Center for Leadership and Disability and a graduate of the KSU Academy for Inclusive Learning and Social Growth. So, okay, and I'm, okay, I'm not muted. Okay, so, um, so like Susanna said, I am a I'm graduate of Kennesaw State's IPSE program, and I also work with the Center for Leadership and Disability. So we're going to start off with reading a quote today. And the quote says, um, post-secondary education is a must important key to shaping a new reality for people with intellect, people with disabilities. It is the extending, exciting, um, oh, exciting potential to create a future based not, not on low expectations the can'ts and shouldn'ts, but on the high, um, on the high ex, ex, wait, ex, expectations. Um, expectations, thank you. Expectations of um, productivity and personal and economic freedom. Can we go on to the next one, Susanna? So what are inclusive post-secondary programs? They are inclusive college programs for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities. These programs are usually four-year and two-year programs. Um, these programs can usually, these programs are usually um, residential or community. That means that some students will stay on campus and some students would just commute from home to um, go to uh, participate in the program. Classes are typical, typically um, audit or university credit, university counting education credits. Ha these um, programs usually have peer mentors as, as part of the program. They are, um, they are, um, internships and work study opportunities. Students learn important um, living skills on, at these programs. Um, next slide, Susanna. Why, why college? Um, students with intellectual disabilities see college as important and possible. Students develop markable skills they cannot typically receive anywhere else programs have programs have life-changing outcomes for students next slide skills learning in higher ed um, so in these programs students learn self management self-determination motivation and social in engagements. Um, Gipsic fa fast facts. So there are 270 IPSE programs across the US. 
nine IPS programs in Georgia, one IPSE program hoping to open in the fall of 2021 in Georgia. They are 58% graduates of um, Georgia's IPSE programs are employed. National and state averages is around 19%. Um, five, 5,000 from Georgia's legislators to be used for programs development and provide scholarships. $500,000. Yeah, 500,000. <laughs> well, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Thanks, Susanna. So um, here's a map of all of the IPSE um, programs in Georgia. So I will um, name them off for you. So there's the first one is Kennesaw State University. Um, the second one is the second one is Georgia State University. Um, the third one is West, well, East Georgia State University. Um, the fourth one is Georgia's Georgia's Institute of Technology. Um, the fifth one is University of Georgia. Um, the sixth one is Alabama Tech Technical College. Albany uh, Technical College. Yeah, Albany Tech Col Albany Technical College. Thank you. Um, and uh, the last two are University of West Georgia and the reason the one, the, the reason Georgia, Georgia um, College is at the bottom because they're still in development of um, getting their program up on their feet, but they're hoping to be open around 20, 2020 to 2021. So that's why that college is on the bottom. If you wanna learn more about these programs, you can visit our um, website at the bottom of this slide, www.georgiaipsit.org. Um, thank you for um, listening to my part of the um, presentation. Presentation. Now I would like to turn it over to Sambu, one of our other um, IPSE interns. So one second. Start, oh, um, we left out Georgia Southern University. Oh, sorry. State University. So I just wanted to put that out there too. Oh, Thanks. sorry. Well, that yes. Fine. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get started with the first IPSC program. So we're looking at the LEAP program at Albany Technical College. And I believe we have Regina Watts on the call. who will be there to answer any questions during the Q&A. And Susanna will be sharing her screen. Albany Technical College, located in Southwest Georgia, is a public two-year institution committed to providing higher education and lifelong learning opportunities that promote self-sufficiency, economic development, and community growth and sustainability. Hello, I am Regina Watts, Special Needs Coordinator and Director of the LEAP Program at Albany Tech. Aligning with the mission of Albany Technical College, the Leveraging Education for Advancement program is an inclusive post-secondary education program. The LEAP program is designed to provide students with intellectual and developmental disabilities ages 18 and older an inclusive post-secondary college education experience. LEAP focuses on developing academic, personal, and self-advocacy skills that lead to employment. The LEAP program is for highly motivated students with intellectual and developmental disabilities. LEAP students can choose from a list of 16 entry-level workforce certificates. All courses offer credit and all courses are taught by Albany Tech faculty. Each LEAP participant also works closely with a trained mentor and tutor to assist students in meeting their academic and social needs. The faculty, mentor, and tutor are dedicated to teaching and preparing all students. 
Each credential certificate offers 15 to 18 credits and can be completed in 12 to 18 months, depending on the student's ability. Courses are offered on the Albany Tech campus where LEAP students have the opportunity to take courses alongside other college students. Along with taking credit classes, students have the opportunity to participate in career development workshops, social community integration, job shadowing, and internships. In addition to gaining new skills and training, each student is matched with a trained mentor to help build the college campus experience and meet academic requirements. LEAP students can enjoy the full college experience by participating in college activities, clubs, and organizations that are available to all Albany Tech students. Modest financial assistance is available to help pay the cost for eligible students to attend the LEAP program. Financial aid in the form of the Pale and Hope grants are available to those that qualify. Potential students interested in relocating to Southwest Georgia have access to university housing on the campus of Albany State University on a first come first serve basis. The LEAP program is unique in that it offers credit certificates that are available to the all Albany Tech students. The LEAP program is also unique in that Georgia residents can potentially earn a college education with no out-of-pocket costs to the students. Contact me, Regina Watts, at 229-430-2854 or contact me at rwatts at albanytech.edu. It's a great day to be a Titan. Okay, great. And um, now our next one will be the goals program from Columbus State University. And we also have Dr. Tony Franklin on the call who'll be, who'll be able to answer any questions during the Q&A. Columbus State University is a teaching university, which means Columbus State is focused on engaging students in their education. Likewise, Columbus State is engaging students in the development of their life. Within the goals program at Columbus State University, students with developmental disabilities are engaged in college life. They're engaged in academic development, they're engaged in their social development, and they're engaged in their career development, just like any other student that might attend college. Students at Columbus State University are engaged not just with the university, but they're engaged in their community. We have students with developmental disabilities who are taking classes on main campus, taking classes down at our urban River Park campus, and engaged in community efforts across the city. So at Columbus State University, we focus on helping students develop who they are. The Goals Program has been around for just a couple of years now and is one of the few places in the state that students with developmental disabilities can get a high quality university education. As an educator and university professor, my interest is in seeing students grow to be who they are in life. Within the Goals Program, I've seen our students grow and blossom Students within the Goals Program are working in a number of areas as it relates to career development. We have students working in the area of broadcasting. Working on the cameras and in the radio studio, and then I work with Dr. Baltimore first semester in the TV studio. Cool. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. So I learned about, because I want to get into broadcasting, so I learned a lot about all that. We have students working in the area of education. We have students working in the area of mental health and psychology. So students in the Goals Program are like students across campus. They focus on careers that are interesting to them. So one of our students is doing an internship within the local public schools. She's working on becoming a teacher. As such, she's taking classes like any other teacher does at Columbus State University, but she's also doing internships with kids within public schools and learning what it means to be a teacher in a classroom. I hope at the college, I'm going, I'm going to be a teacher and I will do my very best to complete my dream of that. We have students that are also pursuing their personal interests. For example, we have a student who's taken a leadership role in campus. He's part of the Collegiate 100, an academic club, 
And as such, he's mentoring others on campus and developing support services for other people on campus. The GOES program provides the opportunity for students to have the typical college experience. The GOES program is a vital, important part of our university programs here. Not only do we raise money for scholarships, but we are now concentrating heavily on raising scholarship money for the GOES program as well. The GOES program provides a, an avenue to prepare students and, and, and give them a typical college experience, but it also prepares them for future adulthood. And we think that's pretty important. It's good, Hill. I made a couple of new friends, with both Jeff and Lois and Shireen, but I'm grateful that I came here, though. This girl helped me out a lot. Okay, and next we have the Choice Program at East Georgia State College, and we have Teresa Davis on the call. Um, Teresa, I just want to ask you, do you want to speak first or should um, Susanna play that video first? Play the video first. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm Bob Bomer, and it's my honor to serve as the president of East Georgia State College. The CHOICE program is an inclusive post-secondary education program at the college. Simply put, it's one of our points of pride. I wanted to see what my abilities were outside of high school. My favorite subject at East Georgia was probably my education classes. Since I did my two internships at Southeastern Technical College at the daycare and then Swainsboro Primary with the special needs programs. I have a disability myself and I just learned how to advocate for myself so I thought it would be nice to return the favor and advocate for other children that have disabilities. Begin your inclusive college experience by visiting our website at ega.edu or calling 478-289-2379. Whenever you're ready, Teresa. Oh, okay. I was waiting for the signal. No, you're uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Teresa Davis. I am the director of the Choice Program at East Georgia State College. And I guess our college is unique and, and special in that we're a two-year uh, college that also has a lot of four-year um, majors that students can come. So students can come for two years or, or, or end up being here for four. The Choice Program was brought here by the president. He supported this effort of IPSE um, long before a lot of other people thought about doing it. And so when Susanna Miller and them approached our, our campus, the East Georgia State College campus, he was with open arms. He has been a trailblazer on this campus. And when you have the president who sits at the top, who gives his grace to a program such as inclusive post-secondary education, it makes that walk for our students so much easier and so much smoother. The Choice Program is a two-year um, four semester program. Uh, our students are totally immersed into the college campus. Uh, as you could see just from clips from that short video that our students are involved. They're involved in every aspect of the college. Uh, many times our students are, um, professors don't even realize that they are choice students. We don't go in and advertise it and they don't wear flashing lights on their head. You know, they're, they're part of the student body. Our campus is a small campus. It's one of the smaller campuses in the state, but it gives our students the chance to have an education at a personal level. Our students are successful because our instructors are familiar with students who struggle across the campus state, you know, campus wide. Uh, we are an access institution. 
Therefore, students not from the regular side of campus come to this campus with needs. And so our students are very familiar with helping students get their feet up under them and to help them find their place on this campus with a personal touch. And so I would say that would be our, our biggest uh, um, jewel, if you would. It's, it's our go-to thing is because instructors are very warm and open and do um, offer our students an open door policy. Uh, we do, just like many of the other programs, we are a certificate program. Our students um, take about 12 hours uh, total. That's a full, full load. Um, our students are first semester are generally taking six hours, two classes with us, and then the rest of the 12 hours are made up from courses across the campus. First semesters, our students are in most all of the classes that freshmen take their freshman year from a CATS class where you have maybe 200 people sitting in a classroom, but due to COVID that's kind of scaled down, which we love because now individual instructors are teaching their specialty and students can sign up for areas of interest. And then they include a lot of the skills that students need to become a successful college student. Uh, the CHOICE program offers our students job readiness, work readiness skills. They do internships. Um, they do um, job shadowing experiences. And so um, we are fully immersed and our students do enjoy very much most of everything that our other students do enjoy. And I'll answer any questions that you have during our Q&A. Thank you so much, Teresa. Yes, ma'am. So next we have the Eagle Academy at Georgia Southern University. And on the call, we have Raven Dela Cruz, Dr. Stephanie Devine and Julie Pickens to answer any questions during the Q&A. Welcome to the Eagle Academy at Georgia Southern University. When students with mild intellectual and developmental disabilities graduate from high school, there are various options they can pursue to achieve their dreams and careers. Here at Georgia Southern University, we founded the Eagle Academy, an inclusive post-secondary education program. The students here at Eagle Academy enroll and get the full Georgia Southern experience with equal access to all campus resources and amenities. How big is our incoming class? Our previous incoming class was two students, primarily due to the pandemic with four students deferring enrollment. The cohort prior to this cohort was a total of six students and five of those students will be graduating spring 2021 with a certification of completion from the Eagle Academy. My name is Mackenzie Stewart and I'm a peer mentor here at Eagle Academy. So how large is our physical campus? Our campus is a total of 920 acres combined. In 2019, we had a total of 22,715 undergrads and 3,339 postgraduates. We're located here in Statesboro, Georgia with campuses in Savannah and Hinesville, Georgia. Currently, Eagle Academy is only offered on the Statesboro campus. Are there any issues related to housing? Students within our program are required to live on campus because we want all of our students to get the full college experience here at Georgia Southern. Students, however, are not required to have a roommate that is in the program, but often it works better that way for the student and for EA. Let's talk about academics here at Georgia Southern University in the Eagle Academy. Students design their own course of study from 140 concentrations here on campus. Each program of study includes 50% or more of coursework existing in Georgia Southern University courses and areas of interest to the student internships are in inclusive settings. These courses will be taken for credit or audited if deemed appropriate. The remaining amount of credits consists of Eagle Academy classes in which we focus on career, social academic, and life skill developmental classes. The student's individual needs and goals will determine the courses they are taking here at Eagle Academy. Students here in the Eagle Academy pay all tuitions and fees as every other student here at Georgia Southern Campus. There is an additional fee for the Eagle Academy. However, we do not have scholarships, but our students can apply for federal financial aid. We are a comprehensive transition program. How long is our program? We are currently a two year program and we are currently years three and four of a CTP program. Students typically graduate in the spring semester of the second year. We are currently pursuing years one and two of a CTP program. 
So how are our students here at Eagle Academy supported? Our students are fully supported by the Eagle Academy staff. They also have one-on-one -on -one peer mentors, which is what I do here at Eagle Academy, or the graduate assistants like Chantel within our program, check in with our students weekly and daily to make sure they're on track academically. As far as campus life for Eagle Academy students, we really encourage students to explore campus activities and life opportunities such as football games, basketball games, other social events. Our students have full access to all of the same student organizations as we do here on campus, campus offices, and service that all Georgia Southern students use. Employment and job opportunities, let's talk about that. Students are allowed to work on campus and within the community. We currently have students who work in the Dining Commons here on campus. Also, all of our year two students are in an internship within the community. This semester, there are all virtual internships. Students have the opportunity to attend job fairs while also selecting jobs that best fit their skill set. What makes our program unique? Um, we are currently the only year three and four program here in Georgia. What also makes our program unique is we are a group of diverse individuals who are willing to go above and beyond for our students in order to make sure that they succeed and they soar like an eagle here at Georgia Southern. We teach our students the importance of advocating for themselves while also making a difference within their communities. Students within our program can get individual instruction and peer mentorship. Our program is centered around our students' needs. Don't forget to mask up, you guys. And hail Southern. Thank you for stopping by the Eagle Academy Day. We greatly appreciate it. See you soon on November 10th at our open house online. Check out our website for the link. Next, we have the ideal program at Georgia State University, and we have Tim B. Tannis on the call for any questions. IDEAL stands for Inclusive Digital Expression and Literacy. We serve students with intellectual disabilities here on campus. The hopes of building job skills and finding great jobs after college. Georgia State is, has a history of being inclusive and diverse um, and prides itself on that. Clearly there was a boundary uh, kind of in a social justice way that we knew existed um, in higher ed and we had to push through that. There are 10 inclusive post-secondary education programs across the state of Georgia. IDEAL is the only one with a focus in digital expression and literacy. Uh, we love all things creative. It's really special that we have a niche here in Atlanta. And like I say, we're the only ones doing it. The IDEAL program offers peer mentors um, who go to classes with students, who support students on the job. We also offer tutoring, independent counseling, individualized internship and career support. We also just offer a safe place on campus for people to come if they're not having a great day or if they need some extra homework support or mentoring. Uh, as a peer mentor, my job is to support the students as they go through their co college careers. So that means, you know, um, helping them with social events, you know, helping them with classwork that they may be struggling with, and just all aspects of college life that they might have questions about. Here at Georgia State, our goal is to have our students fully included across campus. So that's academically, extracurricularly, and socially. We want them to be fully immersed um, and enjoy college just like all the other matriculating students. 
I think everyone should have the opportunity to go to college. That way they can pursue their goals and dreams because you never know if you can really do something unless you give it a try. The reason why I love Joy State Ideal Program and Joy State University because one, I know it's the, it's the downtown, and two, it's the home of the Panthers. I think I still love uh, Ideal Program. I treat them like a family to me. <laughs> In the future, I honestly see Ideal taking over a lot of downtown Atlanta as far as the arts are concerned. Uh, our students are extremely talented when it comes to creating music and just the eye they have for the arts. We have amazing screenwriters and things such as that in the program. And with the right opportunities, with the right partnerships, the right collaborations, our students can be running downtown Atlanta. So, I honestly see the program taking over the minds of quite a bit of people. Our next video is the Excel program at Georgia Tech. And on the call, we have Heather Dix and Luke Roman to answer any questions if needed. Hi, and welcome. My name is Nathan. I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you about the Excel program at Georgia Tech, expanding career, education, and leadership for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities. College is a really great opportunity to grow your skills, make friends, have fun, and find a career that you're interested in. I hope to explain our program over the next several minutes, but I'm sure you'll have additional questions. Please feel free to reach out with the contact information provided at the end of this presentation. The Excel program started accepting students in 2015 and since then has grown substantially and we currently have nine faculty and staff that support the Excel program. Our director and administrative professional and then the rest of the faculty and staff are divided into three main areas. Careers, which you can see in yellow, green, which is our academic team, and then blue, which is our peer and uh, mentor coordinators. Since our beginning at Georgia Tech, students have welcomed the Excel program and our students. The Excel program in Georgia Tech is located in the heart of Atlanta on a beautiful 400 acre campus. Georgia Tech is known for its focus on technology and STEM careers and is ranked as the fifth best public university. Many people ask if you have to be interested in careers in technology to attend Georgia Tech. This is not necessarily the case. We have students interested in a variety of options, as you'll see later in this presentation. Students do learn a lot about technology and its intersection in so many parts of our lives and how technology can help us become more independent. Georgia Tech prides itself on the diversity of our campus and the Excel program is no different. We strive to have a diverse student body uh, and representation within the Excel program. In our four-year certificate program, you earn two certificates, one at the completion of your first two years and the other at the end of the program. Even though you earn two certificates, our program is a complete four-year program. Certificates are provided through professional education at Georgia Tech. Currently, we have 36 students in the Excel program, supported by the nine faculty and staff. We have 32 coaches, 40 social mentors, and 77 academic tutors and TAs. Half of our students live on campus in dorms and half live in private housing directly next to campus. Our program focuses on four pillars, academic enrichment, career development, independent living, and social growth. Each of these four pillars helps you move more to living an independent life. We work with students to identify their strengths and then build their strengths in each of these four areas. Related to academics, students fully participate in traditional Georgia Tech classes. They have access to essentially the entire Georgia Tech catalog. Students have taken a variety of classes, including emerging technologies, 
history of weapons of mass destruction, anatomy and physiology, and literally hundreds more. Students are paired with a tutor for each of these inclusive, independent study courses. Tests and assignments are modified by our academic team to match students' skill levels. We adjust each of the assignments to match the student's skill level, making the content challenging yet achievable. Our staff has worked on developing a competency-based model so students are learning skills throughout the program based on those competencies. Excel courses are taught by Excel faculty. We have a large focus on employment and career development here at, at Excel. Students take a career course every single semester and have an internship every semester minus their first. Our other courses focus on technology, social, and independent living skills. Students also complete a capstone and individual transition planning course in their fourth year to help them pre prepare for life after Excel. We have a robust career exploration and development program, as you can see from some of our on-campus internship sites here. We believe that the best way to learn is through experience, and so we start students working early in our program. Students will have an internship, as I mentioned, every single semester minus their first. This means that well, students will have at least seven internships. Internships start on campus and then transition off campus, typically in the third year. Because we are centrally located in Atlanta, we have access to high caliber internships that give students the opportunity to get real world work experience in their career interest area. Internships are not cookie cutter. We create new internships based on the student's interests to help them develop the skills that they have for their desired career. Students have access to almost all of the 300 clubs on campus. If you have an interest, there's probably already a group on campus, but if not, you can start one. We provide a strengths-based support so that uh, through our coaches, mentors, and tutors. These traditional Georgia Tech students provide the support for students to reach their goals each semester. If the student is the CEO of their lives, then the coach is the COO, the one that's helping them be accountable and stay organized towards those goals. Mentors support students around areas that they want to improve, such as fitness goals or social goals or learning various modes of transportation. The nature of, ment the nature of supports and the mentors um, changes over time based on the student's need. Excel is a non-residential program in that we don't provide residence assistance in the dorms. There's no staff support in the housing so students need to be able to live independently and manage their own medication. Students will have to be responsible for waking themselves up in the morning and getting to class. We do support students if their roommate issues or planning issues that are getting in the way of their success. Students can either live in dorms on campus or directly off campus in private housing. All of our students pre-COVID were living on campus. We still have a majority of students living on campus and believe that some of the most important learning happens through those in-between times on campus. While we do not actively manage the housing in this area, we do have good partnerships with the current housing options. Students can request to room with Excel students or with traditional Georgia Tech peers. We also have students that, um, we have students that have done both and it's really up to the student to decide where and with whom they will live. The application process is available on our website and starts August 1st and ends October 30th. We do traditionally open up this application later and we'll be accepting applications after the deadline, but applications during the deadline are given first priority. Current tuition costs is $9,750 per semester or $19,500 per year. There are additional costs for the program as far as uh, meal plans, personal expenses, and uh, those estimates are provided on the site. The Excel program is a comprehensive transition program, which is a designation through the Department of Education. Therefore, students are eligible for Pell Grants and must complete the FAFSA every year. Qualifying students may have access to partial tuition assistance through vocational rehabilitation. Although these policies are subject to change, 
So check with us when you are applying about these options. If you're interested in learning more about the Excel program, you can attend one of our information sessions, which can be found on our website at excel.gotech.edu. Or if you want a more hands-on experience, come to our summer academy. This is typically two separate weeks in the summer where a student can learn what does it mean to live a life in, uh, for, with an Excel student for a week. They go through a lot of the same experiences and opportunities that our students go through, and it's an opportunity for a student to decide and for us to um, work with and assess uh, whether it's a good fit for the students. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation and learn more about the Excel program. If you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out on social media or with the contact information provided. Thanks. Okay, and next we have the Academy for Inclusive Learning and Social Growth at Kennesaw State University. And on the call, we have Matt Sorensen and Shanna Adkins, and I believe they will be presenting live. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, and I'll just need to share the screen. You should be good now. Okay, thank you. Well, welcome everyone. The Academy for Inclusive Learning and Social Growth offers a fully inclusive post-secondary college education and experience to students with different intellectual or developmental abilities who do not meet higher education requirements for admission as degree-seeking students. The program involves enrollment as non-degree seeking audit students in typical university courses and includes social integration, career exploration, and additional training, resulting in a certificate of social growth and development. I'm Matt Sorensen, a program advisor here at Kennesaw State University, and I'm joined today by Shana Adkins, who is a program advisor and career transition specialist. The Academy has a team that's devoted to our student success. Uh, throughout the admissions process and your student's journey at KSU, they'll work with different members of our team focusing on academic, social, and career elements of our program. Starting in 2009, the Academy was established as the first inclusive post-secondary education program. We have supported 100 graduates from the program and maintained a retention rate of 89%. The Academy is comprised of two certificate programs that work in conjunction. Each certificate program takes about two years to complete. The initial program being Academic, Social and Career Enrichment or ACE is designed to provide a two year foundational base for enhancement in an inclusive setting. This foundation program has been approved as a CTP program as well. The Advanced Leadership and Career Development Program, ALCD, is designed to assist students to enhance existing skills in the areas of career development, self-advocacy, leadership and independence, and academic exploration. One of the highlights of our program is encouraging inclusive learning through auditing classes during the two-year program unique to the student's interests. Students will audit the KSU class at level and accommodations are provided based on the student's needs. We focus on three key areas in our program. In addition to academic enrichment, our program also emphasizes social and career development. Each semester, our students have the opportunity to audit a course specific to their interests. Students will also complete a professional communication course, one CPE course, and three additional academy-specific courses focusing on career exploration, readiness, and life and social skills. From the social development side, our students have access to all events, amenities, and benefits. Our students also are required to join a university club of interest to maintain their social hours. From the career development side, using a combination of person-centered planning and assessments, our students begin building a career portfolio with the goal of exploring employment after graduation. Each semester, our students are enrolled in a professionalism course to explore and learn about different career interests. 
For housing, students may apply through the Housing Resident Life Department once accepted into the program. The Academy ensures student engagement in the dorms by placing Academy students together. And roommate placement is largely based on student accommodation requests. We have a comprehensive list of admissions requirements on our website and invite you to reach out to one of our representatives to discuss further. Concluding our presentation, we invite you to subscribe to our newsletter and reach out to us with any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And lastly, we have destination dogs at the University of Georgia, and we have Dr. Lisa Ulmer on the call for any questions. <gasps> what does it say? It says, Congratulations! What? You got your accepted! What? UCA Bulldogs! What? Yeah! <laughs> Go dogs! Go dog! Go get them dog! Destination Dogs is the University of Georgia's first inclusive post-secondary education program. It allows youth with intellectual disabilities to be part of the UGA campus, to take classes, to gain social and independent living skills, to make friends, and just to be part of the Bulldog Nation. So students who are uh, part of our Destination Dogs program will come away with the skills that they need for a good adult life. They'll be in courses that relate to a career of their choice. They'll be gaining work-based experiential learning. So we'll be in internships and volunteering. I think what makes Destination Dogs so unique is that we've really benefited from the programs that came before us. And we've learned what works and what doesn't work based on those programs. We've also benefited from having a lot of research and best practices. Our students are in courses that all UGA students are taking. So we don't have specialized classes that keep our students separated from enrolled students. Our students are on campus and they're of the campus. It's important because it offers a sense of inclusivity that other programs don't offer. There's so many students out there that have been denied education because of things that are outside of their control and Destination Dogs gives them that control back in their lives. It's important to have a relationship that's not a teacher, that's not an advisor. It's important to build those connections because you expose yourself to so much more. It's beneficial for her because they actually have listened to her and what she wants to do. And this is one of the first programs that's actually asked Britta what she wants to do and how they can get there. She's gonna have a lot more confidence and a lot more security in her own abilities. And um, she's gonna have this larger network of individuals. And she's a part of something bigger. And that's just gonna help her a lot. Just watching her grow with the interaction of older students and mentors has just made a world of difference. Destination Dogs is like a really good program just to go into and just have fun <laughs> getting into like a lot of different things and just finding the uh, spot that you want to be in. I'm proud to be in that program. It's like I have like so many friends that gather around me and just help me through the situation I go through and just like push me through. I want to learn about music Del B and get to know new people. I like playing music because I play my guitar at my house and um, I like helping people with disabilities and special needs. Destination dog really means that everybody has an opportunity to be a dog. Thank you guys so much for watching the videos and listening to our presentations. And now is our Q&A time. So if you guys have any questions, you can put it in the Q&A box or the chat box. Um, the first question is, will we have access to the recorded session? Um, yes, you will have access to it. We will be posting it on Facebook and um, sending it to the listserv um, around the mid-November. Um, and I'm sure Susanna has more details if you need to ask her that. 
Um, the next question is, do these inclusive programs also benefit regular enrollment students who have disabilities? And I'm going to pass that over to Susanna to see if she can answer that one. Well, I'm going to let one of our panelists answer that. So um, who can I put on the spot? Um, Lisa, I'm putting you on the spot. How do these inclusive programs benefit students that are regularly enrolled in college? Thank you, Susanna. Um, this is Lisa Ulmer from Destination Dogs at the University of Georgia. And to answer your question, there's uh, many different ways, but I think all of our programs have typically matriculating students volunteering with our students. Um, I know that for us, uh, specifically, we do not pay um, our students, our typically matriculating students to work with ours. So we are helping um, the students to establish natural, more organic relationships with those with disabilities. Um, and at UGA, we have specifically had um, grad students and undergrad students stay at the University of Georgia so that they can continue to work with our program. Um, and we've been working on breaking down barriers across campus um, for students with intellectual disabilities and just uh, helping others to understand that they do belong, um, that there's not anything really special about it. Um, it's unique in that it hasn't been done, you know, traditionally for very long, um, but breaking down barriers and stereotypes absolutely benefits um, the typically matriculating students. And we've also seen um, a lot of wonderful benefits from the instructors and the professors as well. And Dr. Hi. Omar, these um, next two questions are for you. So someone sure. asked, is Destination Dogs strictly for ID students or do you also accept students with developmental disabilities? Um, that's a great question. So intellectual or developmental disabilities. Okay, and the next question, do you have to pay tuition to get into Destination Dogs? Correct, so um, our tuition rates are the exact same as um, the typically matriculating students at the University of Georgia. Okay. Um, and the next question, how does your program support students with autism spectrum disorder, many of whom do not have an ID diagnosis? And I'll let anyone from the IPSC program answer that. Hello, everyone. This is Tony Franklin from the Golds program. I'll go ahead and answer. <laughs> I know. Um, at Goals, we do have a, some students with autism and it really is individualized. It's based off what the students needs and then we work with the student and our peer mentors and the faculty at Goals program and we support the students based off their individual needs. Okay, thank you so much. Um, the next question says, hello, my son has processing issues and has accommodations from the College Board for testing, but I think he's capable of getting a four-year degree. Are these programs appropriate for a student like him? And anyone can answer that. I'll jump in there on that. Just, it may not directly answer that question, but we do have, ha we have had students who came to us because they lacked the skills necessary to survive on that regular side. They would spend about an, a year with us academically, getting their act together on how to be that college student, how do I study, what resources are out there, and then they do they, we, have, we have two specifically that have crossed over to the other side. They realize that the courses they've taken with us for that year would not count towards their degree that they are seeking like an associate degree in our, in our setting. But our students, uh, we do have students who come to us. We have instructors who refer students who are struggling in the regular setting that are just a breath away from an ID you know, diagnosis. They're just a little bit higher and the pace uh, the tutoring that's available on campus for, for any student in the A Center seems to overwhelm them. And when they, we do allow students to come into our area and get the support that they need, providing that our, you know, that our mentors aren't over-based. Uh, many of our students on the regular, um, in the inclusive programs brings their college friends <laughs> back to our setting in order to get tutoring to get that uh, help and our mentors are not going to turn them down. 
because they're same age students sitting side by side in a classroom and our mentors are the same age. We don't have grad students because we're a two year institution predominantly. And so our students uh, do open that door, you know, to uh, bring back for study sessions. We're in a study session for sociology, y'all wanna come. And so we do have that. So it, I see it as an open door um, to a certain extent, sure do. I hope that helps. Thank you, Teresa. The next question, are the admission requirements the same for all inclusive programs? I'm gonna just jump on. Um, this is Susanna and every school kind of has its own admission requirements. Everything's a little different. They're very similar. So I would encourage everyone to, to look into each school. Um, there are lots of things that are the same, but um, individual schools have individual um, pieces. We are working um, for on a pilot soon for possibly having a common application for the programs, but then there would be additional items that would differ at each school too. So um, I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Susanna. Um, the next one says, what are admission requirements high school diploma? And I believe Susanna kind of answered that. It may be different for whichever school you're looking into. Um, so the next question said, are any options to get four-year degree programs, not only the certificate program? Um, so this is Susanna again, um, admission requirements. Um, so what makes these programs different than other programs is that traditionally um, they're for students that do not meet the typical um, admission requirements to get into a higher education institution. So there are um, exceptions that are made that are given by the president or the provost to um, allow the students to come on campus and audit the program, audit the classes and be part of the university community. Um, but um, these programs really are for students. Um, and as Teresa said earlier, there are some students who just really have struggled and needed a couple more years to kind of get on their feet and really kind of um, have the opportunities to, to build up their um, self-esteem and their understanding of their disability and their understanding of the accommodations that they need. Um, but these programs really were and are created for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities um, who don't meet the traditional um, requirements of an institution of higher ed, whether it's a technical school, um, a four-year school, a two-year school, whatever that um, might be. Thank you, Susanna. The next question, what advice would you give a current ninth grade student whose goal it is, as well as the family, to attend an IPSC program? Um, this is Darian um, speaking. Um, the advice I will give is um, make sure when um, the student goes and goes for that um, interview to you know get accepted into the program, making sure that he wants to go there because you know the student is all about the student when he goes to the to that program. He has gonna he's gonna he's gonna be the one to wake up early in the morning and go to the class and, you know, have that college experience, making sure that he wants to be there himself because that's, he's gonna have to give, he um, want to be there to do the work because, you know, college is also fun, but it's also work. So just making sure that you have all of those um, necessary things, like you need to learn how to manage your time and, um, do your homework and also along the way, advocate for yourself when you need something to um, be given to, that, given to that student. So that's my advice to you, just make sure you um, have confidence going to any type of program that you have and that's all I have. Thank you, Darian. I'd like to say a little to that too. This is Heather from Excel, hello everyone. Um, the advice I would give may seem a little plain, but just like anyone else you know that's going to go to college when they graduate high school, start researching and visiting them in your 10th grade year. Um, start trying out things that you 
want to experience in school. So if you want to go to school to have a better job, um, start trying out jobs in the summer. Um, if you're interested in art, um, start getting involved in the communities and the classes for the type of art that you want to be involved in and, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, the, by doing that, you're going to have a great idea of what you want to get out of a school. And by going to see the schools, you'll get a better idea of what environment you like best. And I just want to add one more thing, and <laughs> I just want to add one more thing, just for the parents, I would just think college.org um, is also a good place for the parent to go to, you know, look at the look at the schools and make sure that they are on campus, or do they want to commute, because it's all about the family's idea if they want the the um the student to stay on. They want the student to you know commute. It might be easier for the parent to you know commute because they live closely, um, or you might want your child to have that college experience. So it might be you know helpful for him to you know have that college experience. So I would just making sure that you look up these colleges and do your research and um, all that good stuff before you just automatically make a decision to go to one college because that one college is that one college that you've heard of. There's multiple college out there with um, programs now. So just do your research and um, yeah. Thank you. That's dear. all I have to say about it. Thank you, Heather. You're welcome. Um, so I'm going to jump to the chat really quick. There's one question that says, is there any chance of the hope of being able to apply for the HOPE scholarship? Um, and can our kids get the HOPE um, to, be, to be applied for the IPSC programs? I'll get that one, Sambal. Okay. So unfortunately, right now, um, students in two and four year university college programs are not eligible for HOPE. Um, it is something that we have been talking with our friends in the legislature about, um, but we have not moved the needle forward. Um, fortunately, our students that attend technical college, um, which is the one, only one we have right now, is Albany Tech. Those students are um, eligible for the HOPE scholarship that technical colleges get. So um, it's something that we're working on, um, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, I did see another question I can answer real quick about Pell Grant. So um, all of our programs in Georgia um, have been deemed a comprehensive transition program by the US Department of Education, Office of Special Education. And that means that students can fill out a FAFSA, which is the um, federal application for um, financial aid. And if um, they're, family or their um, financial situation deems them eligible, they can receive Pell Grant and they can also do work study. Thank you, Susanna. Um, and Susanna, while I already have you, um, the next question, is there a list that compares the school programs? So we have a spreadsheet that needs to be updated. Um, so we, um, we have done that and it will be available on the resources page on our website. Um, and hopefully that'll be by the end of the semester. And then also um, speaking of websites, uh, Darian talked about thinkcollege.net. Um, and I put their website in the chat box and you can go to find a college on there and find the comprehensive list. You can search by states and then you can search by a bunch of other criteria. So um, thanks for that shout out, Darian. Thank you, Susanna. Um, the next question I saw, but then it disappeared. So I'm gonna ask it anyway. Um, someone had asked if uh, Kennesaw and Georgia Tech are the only schools that do a four-year program and do the others do just a two-year program? Um, so I'll let any one of y'all answer that. Yeah, and so for KSU, it's actually two two-year programs. Um, the first one is where students coming into the academy would have the opportunity to complete, and then by invitation, based on their uh, performance and expectations going forward for their career, they would have be invited to participate in the second year program. Um, together, it's four years total to complete both. I'll, I'll take it for Georgia Tech as well. Georgia Tech, we're a little different. We do have the two certificates, but when you um, are accepted for the, the first year, um, you, you don't have to be re-accepted for the four years. 
Um, we have had some students who've needed less time. Um, and so, you know, there are some accommodations that have been made for that, but typically the vast majority of our students have stuck around for the four years. Yeah, at Columbus State, we're the same way. We offer two two-year certificates, but you don't have to be re-accepted. It's really up to the student if they choose to continue in what we call a more advanced career exploration for the second two years, then that's up to the student. But they do have the option to stay for four years at Columbus State. Thank you, Matt, Luke, and Dr. Tony. The next one is just a comment. It's from Sarah. It says, as an educator and parent of children with developmental disabilities, thank you for being inclusive and progressive. I think I speak for many parents when I say your programs have given us a new sense of hope for our children's futures. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sarah, for that comment. Uh, the next question that I see is, I have decided to let my son stay an additional year in high school to better prepare him for college. However, he is on virtual learning due to COVID. With most admission requirements for almost all schools, is there any recommendation or advice you can give that may better prepare him? And I think Susanna is going to answer this one. No, I just said we we're going to answer it live. I'll let um, one or a few of the. I'll I'll kind of cover it. Um, so for me, um, you know, what I would say is just try at least if you're going to do one of the schools that you're going to live on campus to try to mimic a lot of the experience, you know, waking, regardless of still being virtual, like still waking up, maybe doing some more of the independent living tasks and, and working on that. Um, maybe trying, um, I don't know, just a, a variety of different things. Like maybe there's some social events or different things like that online that you could get involved with. Um, so I would just say just really trying to, to get, get, comfortable with some of the independent living skills um, and and not really just being like, you know, uh, the student at home um, with with the parents taking care of them. Because um, the more that kind of stuff's prepared, I think that the better the foundation is to build off of for the next two to two or four years. Thank you, Luke. Um, if I've missed any questions, uh, feel free to type them again. I don't see any questions in the Q&A or the chat box right now. Uh, we have we have a couple, um, we have a, a comment from Georgia State University. Um, it said, I would say again, just allowing your son to focus, really think about what he wants to do and what he's interested in, narrow down what schools he wants and cultivating the motivation and passion. Yes. Awesome. And then the next question says, is everyone going to have summer camps this summer? I know Georgia Tech, it's still kind of up in the air depending on, um, it's just like everything, it's kind of unpredictable what the summer is gonna be like, but um, just keep a lookout on the website and we will certainly be posting more information on that, um, especially earlier um, in 2021. Thank you so much, Luke. Um, Susanna, are you seeing any questions? I'm not, I was just gonna piggyback um, on that to say, is everyone else in that same boat? You're just gonna kind of wait and see what summer looks like. Yeah, East Georgia's the same way. We're, we're, we're planning on doing two summer experiences. And so we're on the same, you know, we've got it planned, it's in place, but we're just kind of holding out until we just see kind of how things are doing in uh, January and February. The same at Columbus State. Same thing. Same at Kennesaw State as well. Uh, this past summer, we were doing stuff virtually online for the summer for ideal programs. So it might end up being that again, or we could do more in-person stuff. So yeah, we're just seeing. Thank you. And the next question says, what's the age for the summer programs? We're going to do two separate age groups. Um, I'm interested in targeting students who are still in high school. Uh, virtually from anywhere from eighth grade to about 10th grade, 11th grade, and then far, target the sec next group for those who are graduating and those who are rising seniors. At Georgia Tech, it, it's um, really high schoolers, but we typically prefer juniors and seniors. 
um, or someone who's getting pretty close to graduating. And also, well, if you've been out of high school for a couple of years and you want to give it a try as well, um, we, we accept students up to 26 years of age because um, at the dorms at Georgia Tech, you technically age out um, to live in the dorms here at Georgia Tech at 30 years old. So 26 has been our minimum age of acceptance um, for that reason. For the summer camp, um, you know, some adjustments could possibly be made to that, but we're really kind of shooting for rising juniors and seniors and then anywhere, you know, up to 26. Thank you, Teresa and Luke. Um, I missed a comment in the chat and someone said, this is a great webinar. I've learned a lot more. I have narrowed it down to three programs with my son choosing one of the three programs. So thank you, Robin, for that comment. Um, Fumble, I, um, I saw a question earlier and yeah. that I just remembered. And so this, um, I would like, you know, whoever, several people to answer. So someone asked, what are some of the jobs that students in your programs are getting after they graduate? So I'm going to let Darian talk about what he's been doing, and then I'll let the schools, um, you know, give a couple of examples, just, you know, two different jobs maybe that a student has. So um, this is me, Darian, speaking. So um, when I was in my program at Kennesaw, um, I was doing a um, various of different internships, but when I um, graduated out of the program, um, I went along and did um, GCDD Advocacy Days because I really wanted to do something in public speaking that really based on um, advocating for people with disabilities and also advocating for more IPSE programs in Georgia. So along the side of that, I did Advocacy Days and I also did a training with Georgia State called My Voice, My Participation, My Board. Um, and from there, I um, um, met with Susanna and towards the end of My Voice, I um, sat down with her and I said, hey, I wanna do something in um, advocating with, for people with disabilities and also advocating for people, advocating for um, IPSE programs in Georgia. So. Lo and behold, the re we're here today and I'm doing the exact same thing um, that I asked <laughs> um, Susanna, that I told Susanna that I wanted to do and they decided to bring me on as an intern. And I've just been going to different type of meetings um, on Zoom and um, learning about different things I can advocate about and um, well, learning about different things I can advocate about. And um, I'm just enjoying the work that I do along the way. So that's, I hope that's, I hope I um, answered that question right, Susanna. Um, <laughs> I think I, I hope I did that justice. Um, so that's a little bit about, yeah. But I just want to say that Darian's internship is a paid internship. So yeah, paid. I, I should, yeah, it's an also a paid <laughs> intern. Yep. Um, thank you. Nice. But it's also, <laughs> it's also a paid internship as well. So, um, yes. All right, so we'll let the other schools answer a couple of jobs that some of your graduates have gotten. I'm really proud a student that we had graduate this year. Um, he moved two weeks after graduation. And of course, we're going through a pandemic. So he took his skills, moved out to Utah, and he's now a concierge at a five-star condo resort. Um, full-time benefits um, in Salt Lake City area. And um, I have another student, hasn't graduated yet, um, but uh, determinedly pursued a job at Top Golf and got it and is now working 25 to 30 hours and hopes to keep the job through to graduation, which there's every reason that he should. Thank you, Heather. Hi guys, Shana Atkins here um, from Kennesaw State University Inclusive Program. Um, we have a recent graduate who graduated in spring of 2020 amidst the, the pandemic. Um, but he kind of outweighed those odds and he was really into CAD work. Um, if you ask me what he did, I would not be quite sure. I just know something with CADs. Um, but he, he did live south of Atlanta. Um, 
now works at Freiburg Glet. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but it is a very well established CAD company um, in the Alpharetta area. Not only did he um, get, get the job, obtain the job, he's maintaining the job in Alpharetta um, as well as living in Alpharetta. He has actually managed to um, buy his own townhome. So he is working full time in Alpharetta as well as owning his first home as well. So that's a that's a huge success story. Of course, any job is a huge accomplishment, but I, I think that's um, one of our one of our biggest thus far. Um, and, and we do have many others that have successful stories, but that's I think Matt would agree with me. That's one of our most um, recent success stories um, that we had back in spring. And then who would have thought all while COVID was going on as well. So very proud of him along with some of our other graduates who have obtained employment as well. Thank you, Shanna. Thank you. This is Teresa at East Georgia, um, one of our very first graduates uh, from the program. Um, I, I was teaching in the school system at the time, had not even created this program yet. And when I met this young man, I would go down into the eighth grade and talk with students as they came up. And the first thing he told me was, I wanna work for UPS. That's what I want to do. I want to work for UPS all through when, when he graduated, you know, and came from the eighth grade up through to, through the high school. Of course, he had me. And every day he said, Miss Teresa, you just don't know how bad I really want to work for UPS. We retire. I retired and he graduated at the same time from that uh, from that school setting. And I came here to East Georgia and started building this program. Um, he tried technical school and it was a struggle. He just did not have the academic skills at that time, that skill set that he needed to take that rigor. And so he called me, found it, called the school, found out where I was, and he came for his interview. And of course, I asked him, I said, all right, what do you want to do? He said, I've told you for a long time, I want to work for UPS. So his first semester here, or like most people, we kind of hone in on what's going on with their, you know, getting their academics together and stuff like that. And, but we, we let them job shadow that first semester. And so of course he wanted to go to UPS. Well, I went out there and the only time you can get a hold of UPS people is about four o'clock in the morning. And so I went out there and the um, director, the, the manager of that hub was a young guy. And he said, absolutely send me this young man. If he's wanted to do this, this long, we are gonna put him to the test. So he job shadowed and it was, he had to go there at four o'clock in the morning, didn't get off until eight. And then he had to come to classes. And so I kept saying, are you sure you want to do this? Absolutely. This is what I want to do. He drives for UPS now. He drives. And so, so those dreams that seem like they're almost impossible to reach are not impossible. Another example is, you know, of recent graduates is um, CNAs through the pandemic. I, you know, the, the, the classes that they were needing through the technical, because we merged some of our students in with the technical school, um, dur especially during the summertime, to give them those credentials that they must have, because as a CNA, you must have. And so um, the governor instilled a COVID-19 CNA program, and she completed that program and got to do her clinicals in a local hospital. And so she's CNA. So, and we all have those stories and, and they're wonderful, but it is to say to parents that, you know, we can meet that kid where they are and help them elevate themselves to those dreams and desires that they have, that they, you know, that they want to have. So there's my examples. Yeah. Yes, Teresa, that's true. This is Tony at um, Bowles in Columbus. And I do want to share, because from the video, we had the student and um, Dr. Blaylock mentioned the student wanted to be a teacher. I just wanted to let everyone know she did achieve her goal of becoming a teacher. Now, she's not like a certified teacher, but she is a teacher and uh, working with pre-K students in a daycare, and it's a paid job. And when we um, met with her current employer, her employer said that one of the reasons that she chose her is because she had hands-on experience working with children that she got through our program with the internship. Because a lot of people who come to get jobs at daycares really don't have a lot of experience working in a school setting. So this kind of gave her an edge over some of the other applicants for that position. And she's still gainfully employed today. 
Thank you um, so much. Sorry, I just wanted to say real fast, uh, highlight one of our students who you guys saw in our video um, at Ideal, uh, Deontay. So he got a job at CNN, which was like huge for us. We were like, oh my God, like he's always wanted to do something like that. And um, unfortunately due to COVID, he wasn't able to work there after a couple months. And, um, but he was still uh, helping to job coach our other students and work with them and their internships virtually. And then just recently he has started his own business and where he's offering um, video production services like editing and making videos for people. And he's getting paid and people are leasing out his services. So um, yeah, just another success story there of just like really motivated students getting out there and doing what they want. Thank you. Um, does someone from Georgia Southern want to answer that question? Didn't hear that one. Julie, you went on mute. Raven or Stephanie, do you want to answer the question? I'm sorry, this is Julie. Can you repeat it real quick? A couple of jobs that some of your um, alumni have gotten. Right. So absolutely. So one of the ones that I was going to chime in and then I stepped out, I apologize, um, was we actually had a wonderful student who was at um, East Georgia and then came to Eagle Academy and she is now from learning from the skills that she learned at East Georgia and the choice program and then coming to Eagle Academy. She has had great success working um, in elder care and recently got married and is just doing wonderful building on both the skills she learned at East Georgia and those that she learned at Eagle Academy. Thank you. And um, Regina, would you like to say something from Albany Technical College? Or Dr. Ulmer, do you want to say something from the University of Georgia? Sure, I can say that we um, probably maybe were one of the newer programs. So we actually have only had um, one, I say one cohort completed our program. And then the second one we had two that finished um, in the midst of the pandemic back in May. Um, both of those two students had jobs. Um, but they have not reconvened. One was at a fitness lab and the other one, um, her career area focus while she was at UGA was in hospitality. So she had a job um, with dining catering services. Um, so hopefully those will pick back up maybe in the spring. Um, some of our others that were out of the original cohort, um, one of our students came to UGA knowing that he wanted to work with other people with disabilities. Um, he also was interested in music therapy and he was hired um, by Athens Clark County Leisure Services as an inclusion aid for after school programs and summer camps. Um, and other than that, we just are really small. So we will have hopefully um, this cohort in May that will be completing will be our third cohort and we will have some more success stories for them. Thank you so much. Um, so we're going to wrap things up. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening to these IPSC programs. If you have any questions, you can always contact Susanna at smiller65 at gsu.edu. And you can always go to gaipsec.org to learn more about these IPSC programs. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Bye, everyone. Have a great afternoon as well.